Hi, and welcome back to the channel, guys. We are continuing The Pacific. This is episode five, titled Pillaloo Landing. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I think I got the pronunciation right. <laughs> Pillaloo, yeah. Yeah, it's the first in a trilogy of episodes, as far as I can see here. Like, we're going to be spending some time here. Um, something about this campaign that... Like... I know that it's uh, uh, an island out there, mm-hmm. and that uh, the Marines landed on Pillaloo, and since it's several uh, episodes about it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be some about something about the hard fighting that they had in that place. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm looking forward to it. It's probably going to be rough as some people have been writing in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll repeat myself and say thank you for all the comments and all the history lessons that are in the comments. I really enjoy finding extra info down there mm-hmm. uh, about good books. And I even started listening to some of the books, but I will not go further than the series. Uh, so uh, I'm starting, I'm in two books now, mm-hmm. and I stopped right after Guadalcanal just to make sure that I don't get any extra info on that. And the books were uh, Eugene's books and uh, Lecky's books. And I'll, I'll, I know that this series based on it, so I won't go further than yeah, uh, yeah. the series. My, yeah, yeah. You, you, there's a risk of, you know, just spoilers yeah. and stuff like that. And, and we want to be surprised just a little bit about some of the stuff going on in, in this uh, in this series. Um, but yeah. yeah, you mentioned it. People have been telling us now is when the, like, this is when the rough stuff is going to happen like all the fighting and the and the violence and the gore and like it's it's all gonna come now um even though we had some some of it uh in in the start like the first episode of course they it was about them leaving and then they they got to guadalcanal um we did see some fighting and we saw some more fighting in the second episode uh but then they went on rnr in melbourne in the third one and then the fourth one it was more about uh them battling the environment and the diseases and the PTSD. Um, we've had a lot of contrasts. So yeah, now it seems like we are going back to some some fighting and, and it's and, gonna get real rough. And I also like that in the comments, you you love your unit, you love your core, you <laughs> love your army brands, military brands, uh, Navy brands, whatever you're in. And I enjoy that and puts a smile on my face to see that you still love your unit. Yeah. Some of you are probably not active duty anymore, but you still love your unit. Yes, there's a lot of pride uh, in, in, in that, and that's easy to see in the comments. It is very nice to see as well. But without further ado, let's get into it. And you can, of course, always check out our full-length reactions where you can sync up the footage with your own copy of the episode. We also have early reactions for shows such as Avatar The Last Airbender. It's all over on Patreon, and the link is down in the description below. Let's go. How's that, fellas? When do we say back the attack? Oh yeah, Barcelona. He's um selling war bonds. Yep, making the rounds, just like Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You just saw that recently. Yeah, that... oh, you rewatched it. The first Avenger. Keep your head down and keep moving. Down, keep listen to your NCOs. Thanks. What's an NCO? <laughs> <laughs> ah. As someone mentioned, it's great to watch with your son, <laughs> slash your dad. Mm. <laughs> Who shows up in the newsreel? You, mom, pop, most of New Jersey, John Bassalone Day. <laughs> that was crazy. Seems like he's actually enjoying it. Yeah, probably fun in the beginning. Mm. I don't feel like you need to prove nothing. You know what I mean? No, I don't. I don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here we go. Oh yeah. Now Eugene is there. Take that, you fucking chap. And recover. <laughs> Stay sharp. Yeah. This K Company? Oh, wait. We're supposed to be in 60 Mortar, second squad? Rami Malik. <laughs> huh. That's snap food. <gasps> I 
Yeah, taken. <laughs> Situation normal, all fucked up. <laughs> He looked glass. familiar. I Maybe really he tell. was. <laughs> I don't know. He's ugly. Fuck you all. Yeah. You have a good vacation. Mm. Water on tap. Anything to get away from you, bastards. We're not so lucky. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, that's not oh, there you go. Never mind. What's in this? When it tastes this bad, it's hard to tell. <laughs> Sake, maybe? Don't know. We'll make some moonshine out of oh, yeah. almost anything. Yeah. <laughs> moonshine. Something's very wrong if you made it through boot camp. Get up off my deck. Shit. Old friends, huh? That explains it. Try not to dislocate a shoulder or break an arm. We need both of you men help. <laughs> Sir. Sir. Carry on. Have fun, just don't hurt each other. Good man. Mm. What's your unit? K35. More oh. just like you. And it's raining. <laughs> Shower time. Yeah, <laughs> shower time, yeah. Hey. Aww. Hey, don't you quit on me, fucker! <laughs> Not till I've rinsed! <laughs> they get hot shower you when they can. <sighs> you know, I might only be crud like this, but... I was supposed to dump y'all off here, then report back to the CP. And why are you still here? I like to watch the new guys sweat. Okay, he's an asshole. Jesus, Sid. Start pulling them out of your hooch in the morning. You won't feel so tender hearted. Well, if you have to kill it, then do it quick and fucking eat it. <laughs> I mean, if there was just crabs and rotten coconut all over the place when they got there, yeah, yeah. they probably did not develop a lot of love for, it, for the crabs. No, no, no. Yeah. Still, it's food. <laughs> it can be. What's it like? Slept with a woman in Melbourne. Well, that's that one, ain't right? And then way down there, as far as you can go, and that's what it's like. That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> that you can never imagine. <gasps> From the highest high to the lowest low. Gone the wrong direction. Yeah, what the f Keep your fucking weapon pointed down range or I will shove that fucking piece up your sorry fucking ass. Now look at me, Lieutenant. Gunny's right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You see Phillips? He already left. I believe the angels are shipping out. You might catch him back down at the docks. Too late. So you're the latest about the other war? There's another war? We invaded Europe. Landed last month in France. Oh, well, unless you got a brother over there, most guys don't give a shit. My brother landed in Italy. Well, I guess you get to give a shit. So, coffee, thanks. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> the whole game is fixed by the will of Gramps on his throne while we're down here for what? His entertainment? That makes us chumps or gods of sadists, and either way, I got no use for it. So what do you believe in? I believe in ammunition. <laughs> Tell you what, though. Can you ask him to sink a few Jap transports and have them all fall on their bayonet so I can get the fuck out of here and go home? You go ahead and keep it. I don't know why I have it in the first place. No, thanks. Come on. <clears throat> What a bonding session. Yeah, you can call that. Mm. Interesting conversation. Here we go. Once again, an airfield. Make sure you have four HE rounds set for fire. Good luck. God bless. You're the Skipper! Get your gear on! Move! HE rounds. High explosive rounds. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Enter the bathtub. Mm -hmm. That's what you call those troop carriers? Some do. 
look more or less like a bathtub. I don't smell. You will. <laughs> I like, you know, he was being kind of an ass to them when they were uh, still in the camp, but now that they're going to war, and they're side by side, he's offering him a smoke. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Now we look out for each other. Yeah. Because we don't want to be too friendly with the new guys. I mean, they tend to die off, so... Yeah, 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 we got so that. the in, old in, guys kind of s- s- stick with the old guys. It takes yeah. a while before you earn friends. Yeah. Yeah, we, we got that whole explanation in, in Band of Brothers as well. Yeah, with the replacements coming in. Fuck! They are going all in on this. They're blowing it up. Uh, airfield, yeah. Well, it helps having air superiority while having a landing. Yeah, yeah. You can do this. Ah, I didn't even get out of the fucking boat. Get up, get up, get up. Good hit down and yeah. Wow. This is like a Normandy Beach type of situation. Take your helmet off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like he's good with that machine gun. One of the what? Pillboxes. Um, um, fortified positions for the Japanese. Okay. Oh, fuck. No. I was just expecting for that guy to get shot. <laughs> Fucking water. Something into the airfield. Everybody, take another salt pill. Oh, me. Yeah, Gunny? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the no nonsense type of guy. Shit, guys, get the fuck out of there. Oh. Uh, ah. Thank you. Nice. Juggers of Conley, H21. Never heard of it. Trying to 
trying to make sure he's not losing any more friends. Oh, there we go. Who's you got hit? Feet are soaking wet. What you gonna do when you're stuck in feet when the fucking jabs bust through the line? You keep your gear on. Mm. Yeah, worry about that later. Passwords Lilliputian. A man awake at all times. Lilliputian? Part for the Japs to say? They use words with L. Mm. Japanese couldn't say the L. Yes, so. of course, yeah. Shit, I forgot about that guy. Okay. About what? He's. Taking souvenirs. Probably of looting. Yeah. Looting, yeah. Teeth. We're rich boys. Tap's got a shitload of gold in his teeth. Gold is what? 30 bucks an hour? Well, gold is gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Being a marine or a soldier usually is not going to make you rich or anything so if you can take something home with you that you can then make some extra money off of i think it, it went both ways they were not nice each other so mm. and the looting of the marines would be things that are easy to carry and later on uh, the troops behind would come and pick up rifles and other stuff like that okay yeah trading loot as well and again, cheating each other. Mm. You want a Japanese flag, so some of the guys from the front line would take a, a handkerchief, and make a red spot on it, and say that's a Japanese flag, and sell it. So. <laughs> All right, yeah. A lot of stuff like that going on. Of course, you also have to pass the time. Yeah, something while you're waiting. My dad was right. Pictures don't show it. You have to be there, looking down into it. The fuck up, you idiots. <laughs> Don't you go out there tomorrow? Yeah, all right. Well, now we go. On Peladu. Yes. Now they have begun that whole campaign with taking that or that, you know, trying to take that airfield there. I kind of... Because uh, the person that I am, I it was too close to some of the points. I I wanted to just to pan out a bit to see the whole compact picture. Mm. But uh, from a uh, filming point of view, I think it's probably better to be with the soldiers down there. But yeah, yeah, it, it shows uh, you know yeah. more firsthand what they're going through and how yeah. they're experiencing it, and which is that is a big part of the series. Is yeah. is yeah, how you experience it as a soldier or marine. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. And I, I also like the way they had, um, you could see all the trees and everything was bombed to pieces before they even arrived. It wasn't yeah. a whole tree anywhere. So uh, you could see they were crawling around uh, between stumps and, and stuff like that and couldn't really move because of all the debris from uh, all the bombing that's been happening Yeah, way up to the point there. Um, yeah, yeah, it was already pretty fucked up when when they got there. So yeah, there must have been a lot of bombing going on. Um, and and I I mentioned something like Normandy because that's my big reference point when it comes to you know landing at a beach and, and then uh, trying to to fight an enemy that's that's already you know dug in and and shooting at you and everything. Yeah. Um, so so that's it was very very reminiscent of that in that way where it's just welcome to the beach now get the fuck down otherwise you will get shot and there's people everywhere just yelling and bleeding out yelling for a medic or corpsman in, in this case um so so yeah it, it was just kind of what i expected but still it is it is tough to watch and especially when you're down there with them and you're seeing just how they're experiencing it uh, and you're not getting like the big picture and and more like the strategy it, it's it is more about you know being right there with the uh, with the marines yeah but also you can see that uh, they showed uh, quite well that if you try to stop up <coughs> just to help a friend to get up and move on if you don't get your head down and move yourself hmm. you most likely will get shut up so it, it's it goes against your nature not to help someone next to you but you really 
need to get a move on to get up and take those positions and then let mm. someone else come up behind once you've taken the uh the the, the ground yeah once then, you've secured yeah. the position yeah. so to say yeah. yeah and you could also see it uh, compared to uh, 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 guadalcanal mm. that they were much better prepared for this the japanese oh I mean, yeah, they yeah, had yeah dug in position they had the pillboxes which is uh, uh it's called pillbox. It's a position that's been dug in, or maybe even concrete one, or whatever. So they are in there, and they have a a, a line of fire that they cover with the overlapping fire. Uh, so mm. they have a way to sort of cover the whole area and still stay uh, hidden, and at the mm. same time stay kind of safe from all the mortars and uh, yeah, grenades yeah. and stuff like that. So oh, we saw them throw some some grenades and even shooting yeah. down into the holes uh, at about one point, and I think that it, that was the, the, the gunny, the gunnery sergeant who, who kind of told them to do that, uh, and he also mentioned something about pills. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. All... But, but that pills I mentioned, that's the salt pills, because they didn't have enough uh, water. So you eat a salt pill? Salt okay, pill. okay. I was actually about yeah. to ask, because he did say something about, yeah, salt pills. So I was like, yeah. okay, is that related to the pill boxes or no. is, an, is it an actual salt pill? It's an actual salt pill. Okay, yeah, yeah. Take just, just to bind the water in your body, you eat salt pills. Okay, and, and you can see people were kind of being dehydrated or they were asking others for water. And uh, like he even said at one point, I'm just fucking thirsty. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it seems stupid that in places like that there's water all around, but you need drinking water, and that's something else. So you mm. need to have a lot of drinking water with you and uh, bring drinking water into the soldiers. Yeah, yeah. And they, a they, whole canteen of one liter is not much to go on on a couple of days. So no, they will get thirsty. They will get thirsty, yeah. and they even said, you know, just save the water, spare, like don't drink too much before. Um, before you're uh, at the beach and everything. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's now we've started this uh, Peleliu thing um, with the island there and they, yeah. they've got there. Um, they are now kind of dug in as well. Um, just uh, trying to get through this uh, first night with um, some people are staying awake and, and others are sleeping help, and then they're taking shifts. Help be God's duty and, and like you'll that. be awaiting the Japanese uh, maybe counter-attacking. That, yeah, that's quite normal. We've and, seen that before uh, when the Japanese have been attacking and they've yeah. been doing their uh, Bansai attacks. It's, yeah. it's mostly at night. Um, so I'm sort of expecting for that to happen. They, as, as I said last time, they, the penny kind of dropped on, on the Bansai attack attacks for the uh, higher ranking officers during the Guadalcanal uh, uh, campaign mm. because they were trying to throw away the Americans from the island with Bansai attacks and that didn't work quite well with the uh, uh, with the machine guns. Mm. Uh, so on Peldu they dug in and they were not not ordered to Bansai attack the same way. It didn't mean that it didn't happen because uh, soldiers will fall back to their original training, which would be Bansai attacks on mm. smaller level. They will still have the Bansai attack. They'll try to overrule the Americans by coming at them uh, in yeah, huge yeah. numbers and it, they'll s still have the same result. <laughs> Bansai attack and machine guns, that's not a good match. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, it is for the Marines, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so we've started now with the way more combat and and we're really getting down and gritty and um yeah it's 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 definitely rough to watch uh some of this stuff happening as well but i did find it interesting and and, and i mentioned it as well like you could see this guy who uh played by rami malik um who's kind of an ass um but he's still you know as soon as you're in combat together then you look out for each other and uh, he gave Eugene some tough love as well with the um, don't take off your fucking gear yeah. when he was uh, saying that uh, when Eugene, he was like, my, my my feet are like soaking wet. Yeah, well, if you get wet feet or you get a, a, a stone in your shoe, just say hello to it and get used to it for the next couple of days until you're behind the lines again so you can get that one out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But leave your equipment on because mm, you never if, know. If you undress, the enemy will come. It's It's, it's like that. <laughs> Yeah, just like yeah. if you go out and take a shower, the phone will ring. It's, yes, um, it's just bound to happen. Yeah, something is just the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, apparently. And, apparently. Um, another thing about uh, it, the whole arc of Peleliu, mm. uh, just to put some history uh, behind it, mm? there's a, kind of the two attacks, uh, attack prongs, 
going. The the whole MacArthur with the army coming up to the Philippines mm. and the other one with the Marines doing the island hopping. Mm. And this whole Peleliu, there's a lot of, been a lot of discussion about whether it was necessary to take Peleliu at all. Uh, mm. There's an airfield there and it was more or less to protect the uh, MacDougall's uh, army mm. approach to the Philippines. Uh, and afterwards they talked about that it probably wouldn't have Mattered. It, yeah, it wouldn't have made any difference yeah. whether they took it or not, which mm. makes it even more sad because you hear a lot about Okinawa and you hear about Iwo Jima. We haven't heard much about Peladu, or at least in, in Europe we haven't heard much about it, but it was very hot fighting. And one of the first times the Japanese really dug in and clung to that island to stay there. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, a lot of soldiers have tried to dig in, and this is a coral reef, more or less. So trying to dig into solid rock, it's it's quite difficult to sort of. Mm, yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah. in, in, uh, any way you slice it, this was a yeah very uh, maybe like a controversial campaign in that it was so hard to take this place, um, and and they were suffering so much uh, while doing so. And then in the end, it wasn't maybe that necessary to do so. No, there's a lot of talk about it. I mean, okay. uh, I'm not degrading the whole uh, attack or anything. That's no, no. really an amazing feat to take the island mm. uh, with the Japanese dug in the way they were. And, and they were also learning a lot uh, on this whole campaign from now they have air superiority, they have the sea, they have uh, the shelling and all that. And just make sure you don't hit your own people and uh, yeah, Japanese yeah, yeah. stuck in as well at the same time. So it's a it's a hard learning curve to uh, to the soldiers to mm. attack Pildu. Yeah, yeah, but but I, I imagine they then uh, hopefully like learned a lot from from this one uh, in particular, and they got to. I, I don't know if they've encountered like Japanese tanks before, really, because um, this is the first time we've seen them in yeah. in this series, at, at least as as far as I remember. Um, and, and and fighting the Japanese in a different way, as you're saying, like they're they're more dug in, they're more prepared, they're more like they build defenses, and they're not just coming straight at you and doing the same kind of bansai attacks all the all the time. Um, so it it was a a different fight that maybe they they learned something from that they could take with them further on, uh, even though they probably also suffered a lot of losses here. It, it goes both ways. I mean, the, the Americans learned about the Japanese, but the Japanese learned about the Americans mm, at yeah, the same okay. time. So, so it it like anything else, it will evolve uh, over the uh, course of the war. That mm. What once you've done one smart move, the other ones kind of learn from it, and they'll try to do a smart move. So it it's uh, yeah yeah yeah. It's an evolving uh, thing. Yeah, the definitely. whole war. Yeah, um, but we also got to spend some time, you know, with uh, you know before we got to Peleliu uh, in in this episode, we got to spend a little bit of time with Barcelona again and just see how he's doing back in America and looks like he's doing pretty well. Uh, <laughs> a lot of luxury and hooking up with an actress, I think that was um, and. Yeah, he's doing what what he was uh, told to do: selling war bonds and being a a hero and and just uh, making people excited about the war almost or excited about he, he didn't like, like yeah. that when, when he talked to that uh fellow at uh, uh when having breakfast with him he said yeah yeah his, don't his, his do, brother yeah. yeah don't do anything stupid don't try to be a hero or anything yeah. like that it was like well i am i really doing this i, mm. I can't help comparing to i just watched the uh, uh captain america mm. the first one where he, he's selling war bonds and suddenly the penny drops for him and uh when he's out with the soldiers and trying to say uh, all the stuff that worked very well back in New York and it just hits him that I'm not doing anything good here. Yeah. And and I expect it will be kind of the same with Barcelona that he'll go, mm, I rather want to be with the soldiers out there because I'm promoting something that's not quite right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still it's... want the money, but uh, it we need the money for the ammunition and all that. But... Mm. Um, I might be selling off, selling it off as something glorious, which is yeah. Bad. That there's there's definitely a danger of you know like glorifying stuff like this, glorifying war. Um, and and you could see like some of the young people like walking up to him and and they want to fight like him and they want to do what he did and like he's he's of course so, sort of setting an example and he came home as a hero and a uh, purple heart um, recipient. 
all that stuff. So, so yeah, it does paint this sort of romantic picture of like you can go to war and you can come back and you can be a hero and you can get, uh, you can hook up with an actress and all of that stuff. And they're looking at Barcelona's, I want to be that guy. Yeah. Um, and that will entice them and that will also, yeah, just glorify the thing a little bit. So I, I totally get uh, why he's probably feeling like, ah, oh, this is not what I want to do to help. Like this is, it feels wrong um, yeah. to glorify it in this way. Um, but I guess it, it also has the effect that people will um, stay optimistic about stuff. They I will guess. stay optimistic yeah. about the war and they, they will invest in it. And, and yeah. one of the big thing about the United States was they were able to sort of shift from uh, making normal stuff to making uh, army military stuff, uh, guns, planes, ships. Uh, yeah, and they wanted probably wanted to do so because hey, it's it's going so well over there. Look at me, yeah. I came back as a hero. So like we're winning. Just uh, yeah. it, it would be different if you came back like oh shit, we should not be there at all. This yeah. is a whoa. We should never have gone there, uh, and we're getting beat by the Japanese. If that was the case, then people wouldn't respond to it you, in the same way. You still need to have uh, the civilian population behind you for yeah. uh, stuff like that. And, mm. and you've seen throughout history that when the civilian population is with you, you can really come back and, and be a part of the society again. They will accept that maybe it's been a bit bad for you and so on. But if if they go against you, uh, like it happened during the Vietnam War, I mean, mm. that that is not something good. And coming back to that was... Uh, terrible i guess yeah 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 if, if when you've been down there and fighting and and i i'm also thinking like when you're in it you're not necess- like you're not you're not fighting because of the big picture you're fighting to stay alive you're fighting for your brothers like who are right beside yeah. you and everything and of course there's this always an element of thinking about I, i'm also fighting fighting for my country but it is more of a personal thing it, it's I'm you, guessing. You one, need to once be you get patriotic there. about it. I mean, that that goes all the way. Even though at, when you're down the in, in the foxhole, it's mm. survival. But you need yeah. to be patriotic about it, and you need to know that you're doing it for the people at home. I mean, if yeah, you yeah. go out and fight, you do it because you want to secure freedom for you and uh, your family and everyone at home. Mm. And you need to believe in that. And once that starts shifting then you won't get the support, you won't get the money, you can't produce the stuff you want, and then you won't get the supplies you need, and it'll it'll bite you in the ass sometimes. So you need to unite as a, as a country or as a, a coalition or whatever mm. you've seen. You need to unite about, let's do something about this and agree on a certain point where you say, well, now the military part of it must be over. I mean, this is the last resort once you to go and use the military yeah yeah and, definitely and, and it, it's it always should that, be yeah, it, yeah it's important that people know about that mm. and they're willing to support it yeah yeah uh, it becomes very political at some point let's not go there yeah yeah let's let's not, not go it, into it reminds politics, me that, yeah. that one thing about the americans and their uh, capacity to produce a lot of stuff uh, mm. and uh, how they did that uh, i need to say uh, uh there was a Danish guy behind that, William Knudsen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the only one that uh, went into the military and got the rank of uh, Lieutenant General as the first rank he received when joining the military. Whoa. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Uh, Looking up, uh, William Knudsen, he's a Danish guy, moved to the States and helped a little bit out in producing forts and Chevrolets. And then at some point in 1942, they uh, contracted him in to be a lieutenant general and uh, procurement manager of the United States or something like that. I can't remember what this title was, but he was uh, really uh, sorting out all the supply lines and helping people produce planes, uh, tanks, guns, whatever, and getting out there. So it really, it it made a difference. Yeah, nice. And as a Dane, I kind of like that. Yeah, 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 because there's not that many of us, <laughs> you know, Danes. Uh, it's a small country and all that. So whenever we contribute to something, you know, worthwhile or something big through history, then we get a little bit uh, proud of that as yeah. well. So, uh, yeah, there's the... It's not yeah. much. Give us that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. And then we got to see Eugene joining, um, you know, the whole, yeah, campaign down there in, uh, in the Pacific and, and getting to uh, Pavubu um, and... 
it was yeah maybe not exactly what he expected at first or maybe it was um it, it's always you know when you see these new guys coming in on replacements or whatever you want to call them and and just uh we talked about it a little bit like how you're being sort of treated as uh as what, a new guy as a new yeah, guy yeah, yeah. you come into a here? camp they they spend time building this camp uh, it it probably looked to him like well it's it's a, a tropical island looks kind of nice they're mm. having a nice uh tent camp there yeah it so, almost looks like a festival so, yeah. yeah so it, it was probably strange for him to get to that point and then expecting to come up meet up with the fellow soldiers and uh, and there were very clearly a line between the old one old guys and the new guys yeah yeah and even met up with uh with a buddy of his from from back home and and they they talked a little bit back and forth but you could clearly see like they like Eugene, he was he just got there, so he was still you know green uh, and asking a lot of questions. And then his buddy, who had already been through the ringer, he was like, uh, yeah, he was in a whole different state of mind. And even you know, as soon as he got the chance to go back home or rotate back home, he just went and didn't even think of saying goodbye to Eugene. And Eugene that's, really wanted to say goodbye. That's to him. a ship you do not want to miss. No, I mean, exactly. That, that so, ship's on your home. You want to get on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, so, yeah. I enjoyed seeing that uh, Akak, an officer, being a decent guy. Last yeah. time we saw an officer not being that decent. So. Oh yeah, with Lecky and, yeah. and and taking his uh, his stuff and yeah, uh, but yeah, this guy Agag, he was he was actually uh, seemed like a really good guy. I, I still believe as an officer that most of us are quite okay, <laughs> even though it's still two to one. Because after that we saw that uh, or before that we saw that long long young lieutenant mm. uh, turning at the firing range, pointing his gun in the wrong direction and being getting a good ass cue from the gunny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was probably a good thing. I, that... Again, Akak was like, don't look at me. I mean, you're the stupid one. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this gun is right about yeah. this. Don't fucking point your gun at anyone else besides like what you're like the firing range and uh, the enemy. Um, so yeah, uh, a, a lot of different stuff in this. I really enjoyed this episode actually because because we went you know from stuff back uh, in, in in the states with the uh, Barcelona and then following Eugene him getting to uh, Pavubu and um, also getting some more stuff with Lecky. He also got got back from uh, where he was in the last episode in Banica, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and, and hooking up with with his boys again, uh, and and then we got to see some some combat and the start of this whole hellaloo. Um, it was like campaign, slowly yeah. gearing up into going into combat. So that yes. Was, that was, uh, so so now yeah we're there, and I think that's uh, what the next two are going to be mainly about. Uh, maybe Probably we're going to be check, a lot check more up fighting. on uh, yeah. on, on Barcelona again uh, here and there. Um, but yeah, a lot more fighting is is probably what we can expect from now on. Yeah. We could keep on talking, but there's still uh, a few more episodes. So yeah, we'll leave definitely. some of it for, for that. And once again, uh, it's so great to look at all the commentaries and your unit's the best right after mine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I do. Yeah. But that's going to do it for this reaction and review of the Pacific Episode 5 Peleliu Landing. Thank you guys 